Whoa! What do we got? What do we got? What do we got here? It's Rocky Mountain. You ever heard of Rocky Mountain? They're a Canadian mountain bike line. They do a couple of gravel bikes too. Pretty sweet rides. I got introduced to these back in the early 2000s when I worked at a shop up here in Fort Collins, Colorado called Lee's Cyclery and they carried Rocky Mountain Line. They had some extreme back then. Um, this is one of the newer ones and it is in pretty good shape, but mountain bikes, used market, is it for you? That's a good question. Let's review the mountain bike purchasing from used and the tips and tricks that you might want to consider on that. In addition to, you're gonna check out what Rocky Mountain is all about after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take scary out of used, one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on the latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy on this whole bike series. And whoa, do we have a gym here to review and go over? Well, first of all, it's a mountain bike. Don't do a lot of those, and there's a reason why. We'll get to that in a minute, but this particular model is pretty, pretty sweet. It's, you know, it's not the high, high end. I have one of those on my website. It's just sitting there forever, full carbon specialized, whatever, 29er. But in any case, this is more of your workhorse uh, price, value, budget. It will do what you want it to do for off-road riding without blowing up the wallet and and it's a decent company. Let's start off with the company, Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain is a Canadian company, and I worked in a bike shop, Lee Cyclery, in the early 2000s that carried Rocky Mountain, and I was when I got first introduced. They had a huge line of off-road mountain bikes from downhill to cross country, and they've actually added a couple of cyclocross style gravel bikes, and current today, they kind of follow the same suit which is kind of cool. Um, I did a couple refurbs on a couple gravel cyclocross bikes back in the day, uh, which is not too long ago. They turned out to be pretty decent. Granted, they're not like the high-end stuff that I worked on. Um, Rocky Mountain does have high-end. Uh, this is a pretty like mid-range kind of bike, although not cheap. This retailed back in 2012 for 2,600, somewhere around there. So yeah, it was a pretty, Decently priced bike and has pretty decent componentry on it. Well, here's the thing. When you're looking at used mountain bikes, there's a lot of deficits you got to watch out for. Reason being is they get used. And with Rocky Mountains, they're a pretty solid bike, good line. They have, you know, they're still around just like Trek, specialized in Giant. And they kind of fit in the kind of the Santa Cruz pivot model realm of more of a niche line. You don't see a lot of them out there, but they do make some pretty cool frames. And the company actually is pretty cool. Met the rep um, a few years back. And what I thought was kind of interesting is, you know, Canada has socialized medicine. And being in a Canadian company, they basically at the time paid their sales reps and also gave 100% healthcare coverage for those sales reps, which was kind of unheard of. 100% out of pocket, they'll cover all the costs because they're in Canada and they figured they needed to extend that kind of warm business ethic to their reps in other countries. In any case, I'm not sure if they still do that today, but that's kind of where the heart and soul, when you have a company that really cares about their product as well as their people, I think you got a win-win there. But in any case, Rocky Mountain's pretty cool. They have that niche line. You'll see them once in a while out there. They're always kind of like a maple leaf. I like the really one that has like the ball burnished frame um, with a maple leaf cut out with red, like metallic red. Very pretty bike. Kind of really kind of cool. Any case, they've had really fun colors over the years. Uh, this particular one, let's dive into this one here. It's the Element, which is a cross country uh, mountain bike style trail riding. Pull suspension, has rock shock front and rear, and it does have a 29 wheels, so you're still within the modern range uh, with also disc brakes, hydraulic, and it has a two by instead of a one by, so you get that close to that range. 
I like the front derailleur. Some people are weird about it. I still think the front derailleur has a purpose. Industry is starting to go to a different direction. I think because of their own reasoning. In any case, this particular bike, how I acquisitioned this is um, it's a neighbor. Neighbor rode it twice. And they didn't really get a mountain biking. And they've had it this whole time. It's just been hanging in the garage. So we got a little uh, garage scuffage that needs to be addressed. I'm going to clean the drivetrain, even though it hasn't been worn that much, just to make sure the chain, the cassette, and the crank set has an ultrasonic clean, all cleaned out. The trailers, the trailers look pretty clean. I'll just make sure they're wiped down and use a uh, lube to pivot that. So this technically should be an easier tune or a lower lift tune for me, but I'm going to go the extra mile. I'm going to go polish the frame, try to get those garage scratches out, really clean it up, do everything that I do with a regular tune-up, in addition to add a ceramic coating onto this bike, too, to give a little added protection from sunlight, UV, water development, dirt development, be able to shed off that kind of thing. So whoever gets this bike is gonna have one fine-tuned bike, better probably than it was new, and has added protection and ceramic coating and clean parts and so forth. Only thing this guy did is upgrade or change was the handlebars itself. Other than that, it's stock OEM. Okay, let's talk about buying used mountain bikes for a second. There's a reason why I don't do this as my niche. I'm a garage shop guy. I have to kind of cherry pick, not necessarily low hanging fruit, but stay in my lane because I can go down a rabbit hole in certain particular directions in the industry where it kind of becomes handicapped to business model. When you're looking at a single person shop like mine, you kind of have to pick a route and kind of stick with it. Once in a while, there's an outlier. This is an outlier for me. Reason being is I worked on mountain bikes for several decades. I built up a lot of new ones over several decades and also raced mountain bikes back when we did not have suspension. Yeah, I'm not old. In any case, I've seen the progression in the tech over the years. It goes fast forward. It could be a great opportunity to buy a lightly used mountain bike uh, for you to get into mountain biking, but there's the trick, the, the secret word is lightly used. Okay, it's like when you're going to find a off-road vehicle like a four-wheeling truck or a Jeep or something like that, lift kit and all that stuff. Did they actually take it out there and beat the living hell out of it? Or was it just beefed up and they really got into it and put it in the garage? Okay, that's the bike you're looking for. Reason being, there's a lot of financial pain points when you're buying a used mountain bike. That's where why road bikes for me is kind of the lane I want to, or recreational bikes is the lane I stick to. Reason being, it's a lower lift. In addition to, they don't get ridden as hard or as damaging. And there's also a bigger financial need for that in the used market. Reason being, they do have mountain bikes in the five to six to $800 range. They're hard to, yeah, but there are a mountain bike. Hybrids, some some there. I'm still kind of dabbling in that a little bit, but for road bikes, <laughs> to get it to a decent one, you're spending two grand. So there's a huge gap. Bike industry has ditched that. That's where my niche has kind of fallen into. Fast forward today, I'm doing a lot more service than refurbishing bikes. So it's kind of the market chain. I've kind of had a change and be a little ebb and flow with it. In any case, I'm still doing what I'm doing, but I'm just doing more service, basically telling you, go buy that bike used, bring it to me to tune it up, I'll get you out there with the best result possible, versus me trying to buy a bike because prices right now have plummeted really low. Again, really good time to buy. Really, really good time to buy. But buyer beware. Now it's including with all bikes, but specifically with mountain bikes, there's a couple of things you want to ask when you're filling in the questions or when you're looking at the posts. Well, number one, you want to make sure they have multiple pictures. If you need more pictures, ask for them. I mean, honestly, some people just throw up one picture that they had for their last Moab trip and they call it good. Now, you want to look something a little more current and more 360, like the whole picture around the bike, frame, whole bike, drivetrain, shifters, other side of the bike, wheels, front and rear. Reason being, you're trying to double check if any damage to the frame, any damage to the wheels, do they all match? You want to look at, be able to see the componentry branding. Reason being is you want to double check, reference it through Bicycle Blue Book or whatever 
uh, website, you can find Google search for that, make, model, and year, and see if you have the close OEM parts and so forth. If parts get replaced, there's two reasons. One in is they just want to upgrade something different. Two, they broke it. It needs to be fixed with something new. Go with the first one if you can. Uh, also, people have this mythical idea of like, I put $500 into the wheels on this. I should add another $500 to that bike. Nope, not happening. Not in this market, not should have been in initially. Reason being is you may have elevated the bike, but you did not elevate the price. The price in the bacon model of the bike will be about the same. You may have a better chance to sell that bike, but don't be expecting to get that money out of it. So when you're looking out there with elevated parts on a bike, upgraded on a mountain bike, you want to ask, were they upgraded because you broke them or you upgraded them because they thought they were cool and you want to try them out and you either got another bike and went in a different direction. Feel those questions. And 10% of the time, they're lying. I mean, it's just going to be straight out like, oh, I, whatever. Kind of read through the BS. I mean, or it's either they're flat out lying or they do mis misthink. Like, oh, I thought I had it tuned up, but that was four years ago. People just don't have a great memory, especially when a bike they haven't ridden in a long time. Or if it's like my son's bike or my wife's bike or whatever the case may be. Um, but also, that's another lead of the question. Try to buy it from the original owner. The original owner will understand they have a big sticker loss, loss on the bike when they sold, are going to be selling it. Yep, that's going to happen. They understand it. But with the original owner, you're going to have a little more history on the bike. How it was used, where it's been used, did they enjoy it, did they not enjoy it, why are they getting rid of it, all those kinds of things. In this case, they rode it twice, never got into it, decided to do something else. They do other kind of riding, which is great. So it sat in the garage for the last 12 years. So they just wanted to go out and that bike to be used, to be used to its full function instead of sitting and collecting dust in the garage. Great gym for somebody out there that's looking for a mountain bike. That's what you want to look for as in a buyer or a seller, being the buyer. Okay, so we got over like the field questions. The other questions you want to ask, when's the last time it was tuned? And who buy? You want to know the shop. You don't want to like, oh, I tuned it up. Yeah, man, it was all great. You know, it's all tuned up. I'm, you know, a pro, nothing, nothing mechanic. Yeah, right. Where's your credentials? What shop do you work at? What kind of thing? What shop did you take it to, to have it tuned up? Are they known to do tune-ups on mountain bikes? In addition to, here's the tricky bit, a tune-up usually does not include front and rear suspension. That's a whole different subset of costs to have it serviced. Have they had it serviced? Nine times out of 10, more often than not, nobody services their suspension. Why? Number one, it's costly. Second, they never wrote it enough to get it serviced. It's based off of hours and so forth. So this particular one, even though it's a little older, it's only been used twice on dirt, light trail riding. The seals and everything are probably just fine. But if you see a bike that has any kind of scarring or dirt and all that kinds of stuff around it, and they said they just had them tuned up, no. When the service is done on a shock, it is pristine because they got to take the whole thing apart and put it all back together. Expensive. There's a place called Dirt Labs in Longmont, Colorado. You can ship your forks and your rear suspension to to have them serviced. That's one of the recommendations I suggest. That's all they do. Like me, I have a little niche. They have their niche and they stick to their lane. Therefore, you want to have that done. A lot of shops are doing that nowadays because there's so many different parts and intricacies of all those suspension work. So if you have a shop, that's all they do that's going to get done most of the time right at the first gate. Yeah, you're paying a little bit more for it, but you got that vote of confidence that's going to work and perform. So you're not constantly returning it back and trying to get it to fix. Also, they will know all the little nuances, issues with those particular suspensions with it that, in that vintage. So check them out, Dirt Labs. I'll put a link below. In any case, back to used bikes. Well, yeah, they get used and abused. Suspension is a concern. Disc brakes are another expensive lift. You want to make sure those are working. The pads look good. The shifting, the chain, all clean. Honestly, 
It has to be pretty much an immaculate shape. If I was going to go buy a bike from somebody that's a full suspension or front suspension to even consider purchasing it. Immaculate. In other words, clean, polished, lubed, nothing on the drive chain dirt wise, super clean, super clean. The rim, then you, then you check the wheels, make sure the rotor's not banging up against anything. Check the rims, make sure they're not banging up against anything. See the suspension, make sure it cycles through. If it's not test rideable, walk away. All those things. I have a five top five things, top 20 list. I'll have a link below as well for you to check out. But there's a lot of expensive lift on a used mountain bike if you purchase it incorrectly. I have a video that's going to be coming out, come across a bad purchase, wah, 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 yeah, purchased it, bought a whole bunch of parts, they got a really low price, but there's so many bad parts on it, it's not even worth fixing, I mean, it, it is horrible, horrible, nightmare situation, so don't find yourself in that, because you'll end up down, you go into the bike shop, I'm pretty inexpensive as a bike mechanic, but most likely in your neck of the woods, when you have to have those specialty work done, it's gonna add up quite a bit. So for example, on that one where it went bad, wheels bad, disc brakes, parts, chain cassettes, even suspension, I don't care if you even paid 100 bucks for the bike. You're gonna put 12 to 1500 in parts and labor to get that bike up and running. Easily, hands down. Sounds crazy, huh? Yeah, that, when you add up a wheel set, componentry, suspension work, they run about 150 to 250 each to get worked on, by the way. That's why people don't get them serviced, because they don't want to pay that uplift cost. If it's general maintenance, it's one thing, but they have to get overhauled and all that, that's where it gets really, really pricey. So, and then there's linkage systems, pivots, all sorts of things can go wrong. Okay, hopefully I didn't scare the pants off you, but there are some gyms out there, like this one. And there's several other ones I've seen out there, but I'm just not in that niche, so I'm not going that direction. But I did see a couple other for that one customer that had a, a horrible experience. And I've been trying to help him find something. Hopefully this will be something for him. But they found a couple other ones that are like pretty decently done. But I would be still really fine tooth comb going over it with details. And if you can get them as original owner, like, hey, original owner, you did pretty good on this site. If I take this as my mechanic and find something really bad, can I return it? You can always ask. I mean, most likely not. But some of those securities, some people will be willing, like especially if they're first owner, like, oh, I didn't realize it was bad, I'm sorry. Well, I'll pay for half the tune-up or whatever. Case in point, behind me, a couple of tri-bikes. Any case, <laughs> he, um, that's a whole nother series of trouble. Any case, as a mechanic, we've seen it, we've done it, pretty much all. I am super excited about this one because I met the couple. I, I see their bike, it's immaculate. I'm excited to get this bike to somebody that's getting into or getting back into mountain biking or whatever. It's even my size. Uh, I'm not gonna do it because I'm just, I've aged out. I'm like a hard thud and it's straight to the ER if I wipe out. But for somebody that's a little bit maybe younger, or a little more spry than I am for my age, um, yeah, this will be something great. So in any case, um, I'm gonna, Slap on my gloves, do some cleaning. So essentially, I'm not going to need to do too much like overhauling because it essentially is new. So I just want to make sure I kind of buff out, if I can, some of these scratches. I'm going to clean the chain cassette and the crank set and ultrasonic cleaner. Wipe down and clean the derailleurs. Kind of like your entry-level basic tune with a drivetrain clean. That's what your $150 to $200 price point tune-up is at most shops-ish. Take the pads out, clean them up, put them back on, chew the wheels, chew the rotors, adjusting the hubs if need be, check the headset, check the suspension, just make sure it's aired up and it cycles correctly, and then clean the frame with all the parts off of it really good, and try to buff out some of these scratches and get a final coating of ceramic. Uh, ceramic slam is what I'm going to be using on this one from lithium, and uh, try to get this thing to be pretty much looking better than new um, and doing the fine tune up like that is a better tune than you would have initially when it's built and I know this sounds weird and you're gonna like go roll your eyes on this
but when bikes are new, they're usually not performance tuned because they're usually built by big builders and they're building bikes so much, so well out of manufacturers now. They get to the store, they pop them and throw on the front wheel, adjust the bars, pedals and seat, boom, out the door. They don't go through like a fine tune up tune on a new bike. They're not adjusting the hubs, they're not truing the wheels. They're checking the wheels, but not truing them. If it works through the, you know, the rotor, works through the brake pads and not touching, done. It's kind of like, it's sad to say, as minimalist you can do to get the bike on the floor. <laughs> That's where we're at today. Back in the 90s, we didn't have that option. Everything was such a hot mess out of the box. We had to basically do a tune-up on a bike that was new. Case of point, I'm not saying all shops, but majority of the chain stores are like this. It's all about volume and they pay per bike per unit kind of thing. It's been that way for the last decade or two. Here we are today, so the tune-up on this bike will be better than the one that was actually not tuned, just built out of the box new. On top of that, I'll add a ceramic coating and polishing, which you don't get on a new bike hardly ever. Um, if a shop does provide that service, it's kind of like that add-on cleaning polishing. If you can get to do it on a new 5,000, 10,000 bike you just bought from home, heh, that'd be great to do it because everything's new. Clean. It's easy to polish and easy to put that stuff on. In any case, you can do it yourself. I have a video on that below too. All right. Um, I'm going to crank on some tunes. Crank on some tunes. I'm going to turn on some tunes, crank, reverse that, apply it. We're going to do some tunes and tunes, and then I'll do a review of the parts. And if I come across anything hairy, scary, I will feature it as well. If not, you'll see some clean parts and a polished frame. Let's get jamming. Well, there we have it. Oh, what do I use here? Oh, armor, wax. Ugh. Look at those wheels. That's the white you're never going to see again because with white bikes, they just, or white parts, uh, they will just turn dirty after your first couple of rides. But super true. Super smooth, it, they're ready to go. They just need to be clean and put a nice ceramic coating on there. They're really tip top shape. Clean the drivetrain, cassette all cleaned out here. Crank set clean with a ceramic coating as well. Ooh, what's this? Oh, the chain just waxed it, is now cooling. So you can still see the wetness of it, still dripping. So yeah, it's gonna be fine tuned. Oh, where do the brake pads go? Oh yeah, just burned them off. So with the frame, I detailed it. I used scratch and swirl, compound, polish, and I topped it off with ceramic slam coating using my Dremel buffers here. Uh, reason being is, bam, looking at this frame, you'll see a haze from the actual ceramic coating, and uh, but it definitely cleaned up really well. And when we're talking about some of those scratches that I cleaned up, there was one that was a nice little gouge scratch. It's pretty much gone and a couple through here. So there you can see a little one still there. But in any case, buffed them down, smoothed them, leveled them out as much as possible between those uh, three treatments, scratch and swirl, compound, and polish. And then I put the ceramic coating on there. And that's where you see this haze. But well, we're going to do what they call, I did like a, a three-ply. I stacked it three times. Reason being is mountain bikes get a lot of gunk on them. So I wanted to make sure I got all the bits at least once. So and it has all these little intricate areas. So I kind of did it three times to make sure I got everything at least once. And doubled up on the areas where I know it's going to have a lot of contaminants, you know, occasionally caking up on it. So looking at the stack there, once you take a fiber cloth and bam. You knock it down, that's when they're knocking down the actual ceramic coating and it becomes super, super, super smooth. And that scratch that was here, pretty much gone, covered up, sealed. You see a little bit of a buffer there, but and a little bit of one here. But there was a couple other ones on top that were pretty noticeable. Um, also made the head badge look super nice. Put it on the fork extensions not the stanchions, but the 
actual fork it, blades themselves. And this is where I had a lot of scarring too from just the cables and dirt, just for that one or two ride. So I put a, a good coating. I'm going to probably put a sticker or two to cover it, protecting. And then we had a little bit of scratch here, and that buffed out and ceramic coated very well in addition to. So looking at all the parts, looking at this bike, oh, look how amazing immaculate. So reassembly should be pretty straightforward. Disc pads put back in, crank set, cassette wheels and chain, and double check the shifting and the braking, and it should be ready to go for its test ride. But I forgot to mention, with this particular bike, the owner still had all the original owner's manuals. Shock pump, extra tube, some extra bits in there. So this is what you're looking for when you're looking for a used bike, lightly used, and has all its bits. So, well, let's put this back together and let's do a test ride and review after this. Well, there we have it. All put together. All super clean. I even added red in caps to make it match the decaling of it. That includes the bars. Let's take this bad boy for a spin. All right, Ooh. got some sun. Let's check it out. Yeah. Nice. Whee! All right, here we go. We're on the test ride with a Rocky Mountain Element. And check the gears in the back. Wax the chain. Gonna go a little light, not too much pressure. So, chain still needs to work in a little bit. But other than that, it'll be super smooth. Nice. Got this small, small. Woo! My little legs go. Hit my brakes. This has not been used to the point where the brakes have not even been broken in. The pads are essentially new once I clean them. So this bike is in one immaculate shape. And with all the ceramic coating and the wax chain and the fine tune cleaning we are talking about this thing is is in great form let's see if we can get this guy fast gear whoa smoking okay so when you have brand new pads or brand new brakes or brand new bike oh got some skippage going on in the back better double check that and stand when i'm done yeah it's my just minor adjustment in any case you want to ride the brakes, basically lightly feather them or keep them pressed. So you actually have a resistance to them. And you need to heat them up. What that is doing is breaking, breaking in the pads, burning in the pads. And that way they will be at the best performance. And you want to do this before you get into any kind of contaminants and all that. But break these bad boys in. In the meantime, check out this beautiful scenery. Yeah, boy. Call her out in the summertime. Yeah. So, it's in small gear and likes to be popping. That means that two things. Either that small cog is worn out, or it's not installed correctly, or it's adjusted to a point where it's not going down to the smallest cog. It's preventing it, so it's fighting against the derailleur. We will check that momentarily. But, small adjustment. Most likely it's in play. Let's review and check out this beautiful bike. There we have it. Element, Rocky Mountain Element, 930. Don't get it confused with the 930 Trek, which is a low-end mountain bike. There we have it. Beautifully tuned, ready to hit the trails, ready for its next adventure. Well, thanks for hanging out in the garage with me. 
Hope you got some insights on this on used bikes, used mountain bikes specifically, and also some information about Rocky Mountain. And again, if it's nice in your neck of woods, please go for a ride. It's beautiful. Ride. And again, there's more information in the description below. If you have a bike like this, or this style, or found good gems like this for resale in the used market, throw some comments below. It is a community, so we're all here to add to it. And again, it wouldn't be for you to make this channel for me to be here doing this. Thanks again from the garage, and have a wonderful day. Before you go though, check out these awesome pictures.